ArcGIS Pro is one of the most popular GIS software in the industry today. To help you get the most out of ArcGIS Pro, I've compiled a list of the top 20 tips and tricks. These tips range from basic customization options to advanced analysis techniques and data visualization tricks. So let's get started. Starting with number one, we have linking map views. Linking views in ArcGIS Pro refers to the ability to synchronize the display of multiple maps or scenes in the software. When you link views, changes made to one map or scene will be reflected in all the other linked maps or scenes simultaneously. I really think it's useful when you want to work with multiple views of the same data, such as when comparing data across different layers or time periods. At number two, we have data engineering. Data engineering in ArcGIS Pro refers to the process of preparing and optimizing spatial data. This involves a range of tasks such as data exploration, cleaning, integration, transformation, and quality control. These tools allow users to automate and streamline the data engineering process. One of the neatest things I like about it is the charting capabilities and being able to interactively associate charts and graphs with your data. At number three, we have layout files. If you've ever wanted to create standardized map templates for your organization, you can do this with layout files. Layout files contain all the map elements, data sets, data frames, text, graphics, and other elements for building professional quality maps. The main advantage of layout files is that once you import one, it will contain a layout and a map, which are linked to each other. At number four, we have field calculator helpers. If you want to create sequential or random numbers in any column, the easiest way to do this is by using helpers. Helpers are pre-written pieces of code blocks that you can use to automate a specific task. Don't forget that you can do this in either Python or Arcade. At number five, we have dynamic text. I love the dynamic text options in ArcGIS Pro. It's just more intuitive than how it used to be in ArcMap. Just click on the dynamic text dropdown and you'll have an enormous list of text elements that will automatically update based on the current properties of your map layout. By using dynamic text, you can create maps that are more informative and easier to maintain. At number six, we have importing MXDs. For those of you that are transitioning from ArcMap and want to import an MXD, ArcGIS Pro makes it really easy to transfer over any of your older map layouts. From the insert ribbon, you can select Import Map, and this will allow you to add existing MXDs to ArcGIS Pro. This tool is not only for importing an existing ArcMap document, but you can also import from ArcGlobe and ArcScene as well. At number seven, we have point clustering. Point clustering is a technique that groups points that are close to each other in space to help clean up the appearance of your data. To use point clustering in ArcGIS Pro, click the Feature Layer tab. Then, go to Aggregation, and select Clustering. The neat thing about point clustering is how it creates circles proportional in size and labels each one with the number of points it's clustering. It's a really easy way to clean up your maps if you have a lot of point data in them. At number 8, we have Scale-Based Symbol Sizing. Let's say you have points on a map. The default way for ArcGIS Pro to display points is to show the same size of point, no matter what your scale is. But what happens if you want to make your points get bigger when you zoom into a map? It's possible to do this using scale-based symbol sizing. Just double-click your symbol and click on Properties. Enable scale-based sizing and all you have to do is add breakpoints to change the size depending on your map scale. At number 9, we have copying features. I don't know why, but it always seemed like such a pain to copy data from one feature class to another compared to its predecessor ArcMap. But when it comes to ArcGIS Pro, they've made it significantly easier. All you have to do is simply select your features and copy them. Now, select the drop-down in the Paste button and select Paste Special. Now all you have to do is select the layer you want to paste them into. Finally, push OK. You'll see the features copied over to your other feature class which is a lot easier than how it used to be in ArcMap. Okay, we're halfway through. At number 10, we have Organizing Favorites. ArcGIS Pro provides a feature called Favorites that allows you to save frequently accessed items, 
such as folders, SDE connections, and geodatabases for easy access. To add a favorite, you can right-click any folder and click Add to Favorites. Then, you'll be able to see it in your Favorites tab. Let's say you want to add this folder for every project you create in ArcGIS Pro. You can do this by right-clicking anything in your Favorites and selecting Add to New Projects. Another thing you can do in ArcGIS Pro is to add any geoprocessing tools to your Favorites as well. This can be handy for any tool that you repeatedly use. At number 11, we have Project Packages. Let's say you want to transfer an entire ArcGIS Pro project to someone else outside of your organization. How would you do that? Packaging a project in ArcGIS Pro involves creating a self-contained package that includes all the data, maps, and toolboxes required to share a project with others. To create a project package, first you can click on the Share tab in the ribbon menu. In the Share tab, click on Package Project under the Packages section. From here you can set the name, tags, summary, extent, and file location to share your project package. At number 12 we have Map Notes. Let's say someone is at your desk. Then, they ask you to add a couple of points on the map for reference. What would be the easiest way to mark up a map if you don't have a layer to edit in your map? My suggestion is to use Map Notes, which are a quick and easy way to add features or annotations to a map in ArcGIS Pro. All you have to do is go to the Insert ribbon and select a style of map notes. To create features, just go to the Edit tab and start marking up your map. It's as easy as that. You can also create lines and polygons as well, which is really convenient. At number 13, we have Heat Maps. One of the nicest improvements in ArcGIS Pro is that you don't have to run the Kernel Density tool to generate a heat map. All you have to do is right-click your layer and select Symbology. In the primary symbology, you'll see that it's probably using the single symbol type. Instead of using this type of symbol, you can select the drop-down and scroll down to Heat Map. This will quickly generate a heat map for using colors to represent the intensity of a variable across an area. You can change the color scheme, weight, and method if you want. But overall, it's a quick and easy way to build heat maps that are native to the symbology of ArcGIS Pro. At number 14, we have Schema Management. One of the most refreshing changes to ArcGIS Pro is Schema Management. ArcGIS Pro has really simplified the process of adding and deleting fields. To add a new field, open your Attribute table. Then click the Add Field button. This will open the Field view, where you can add and delete fields or update the data types for your attribute tables. At number 15, we have Editing Grids. Editing grids are a way to add horizontal and vertical grid lines to your maps. They're right next to the snapping tools at the bottom left corner of your map frame. It's possible to change the amount of spacing, and you can also adjust the position and orientation of the grid to suit your needs. In the editor settings, you can also change the grid line color, visibility, and snapping settings. At number 16, we have graphic layers. Graphic layers have had a big redesign in ArcGIS Pro, and I'm not that big of a fan. It's just not as intuitive as it used to be in ArcMap, and takes a lot more time to add annotations. So one of the biggest changes for myself is having to remember to update graphic layers in the Map view, and not the Layout view. To add a graphic layer, open up your Map, not your Layout. Then go into the Map ribbon, and click Add Graphics Layer. To actually edit the Graphics layer, go to the Graphics ribbon. Select your target layer. Then, choose the type of text you want to add and click on the map. There are also options for how to style your text. At number 17, we have 3D Exploratory Analysis. This is one of the neatest additions to ArcGIS Pro. As the name suggests, it allows you to immerse yourself in a 3D scene and interact with your environment with a set of exploration tools. For example, I am using the Viewshed tool, but there are also options for line of sight, cut and fill, view domes, object detection, and much more. To use this, make sure you have a 3D layer in your map. Then, you can find it in the Analysis tab under Exploratory 3D Analysis. Finally, all you have to do is just pick the type of exploratory analysis you want to do. 
At number 18, we have Pairwise Geoprocessing. If you've ever seen Pairwise in a geoprocessing tool in ArcGIS Pro, you might be wondering what it means. All it means is that the tool will use parallel processing by default to run the process, or how many cores your CPU will use. But I suggest that you read each tool before you run it, as the output might vary slightly from the classic geoprocessing tools. At number 19, we have Converting to 3D Scenes. To convert to a 3D scene, click on the View ribbon. Next, select the drop-down, and you'll have to select either a global or local scene. Once the 2D map is converted to a 3D scene, you can adjust the camera position and angles to visualize the data in 3D. This is especially nice if you are working with a digital elevation model and you want to see it in three dimensions. Finally, at number 20, we have the Image Classification Wizard. So you're going to use this tool for any remote sensing classification. It could be unsupervised, supervised, or object-based. The biggest advantage of using the classification wizard is that you get to see your classification before you generate the results. So if you don't like what you see, you can keep on adjusting the parameters until you're happy with the results of your image classification. All right, so there we have it. I showed you the top 20 tips and tricks for ArcGIS Pro. From exploratory 3D analysis to heat maps and data engineering, these were the tips and tricks that I thought would be most useful for you. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you next time.